Welcome to the teaching ministry of Rev. Daryl Baker, pastor of Christian Faith Fellowship. Pastor Baker is fulfilling the call of God on his life to preach the Word of God without compromise. Raising up disciples who through faith in God will have a powerful impact on our world. May you be blessed through the message that Pastor Baker has to share with you today. May God's very best be yours. So Joel 2, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually go here to Joel 2, and then I'll touch on a couple verses that we left off with. But I want to start here with Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, I want to begin with going over what is a prophecy of the day we're living in that we have already seen over in the book of Acts. But now I want to go back here directly to this actual prophecy spoken by Joel. We are talking about the glory of the Lord, why we need to understand this glory, God's manifest presence, and the reason for it in relationship to the day we live. Why does God want us to walk in the light of this understanding of the glory of the Lord? Joel chapter 2 verse 23 says, Be glad then, you children of what? Are you in Joel chapter 2 verse 23? If you're there, lift your hand and say, That'd be me. All right, so you all know how to read, right? All right, read with me, please. Be glad then, you children of... Zion. What Zion in relationship of the Old Testament prophetic to the new? It's talking about the church. church. Talking about the church. Talking about us, the body of Christ. So what are we supposed to be? Thank you. Be glad. Be glad. Don't be sad. Be what? Yeah, but you don't know my situation. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'm going to talk about in an upcoming series on healing about how many, many Christians don't realize they really do walk by sight and not by faith. In different areas of their life. And unless you're walking by faith and not by sight, guess what? Faith don't work. you got to walk by faith and not by sight. So when are we supposed to be glad when everything goes good? No. Nope. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. Okay. Are you doing that though? Are you doing that? I didn't get many amens on that. Be, be glad then, you children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Yes. Why? For He has given you. What has he done? Given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Now, this is talking to those of Joel's day of natural rain, but prophetically, it's referring for me and you to the rain of God's presence, the outpouring of God's presence. And what is this latter rain referring to? The time in which began of the book of Acts Chapter 2, the time of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost was poured out on the church. We'll see that. Verse 24, the threshing floor shall be full of wheat. The vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. For us representing the presence of the Holy Spirit in manifestation at work. 25, so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The crawling locust, the consuming locust. And the chewing locust, my great army, which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be what? Never be put to shame. In the day of the church, those who understand and walk in the light of these truths, they'll never be put to shame because they're going to walk in the glory of God and see that glory totally change everything about their life. 27, then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people shall never be again put to shame. In the New Testament, obviously representing God's people, it would represent the Jewish nation. The Bible says if you're born again, you're a Jew. Meaning what? You're part of God's people. I said you're part of God's people. Verse 28, notice this, and it shall come to pass afterward... Notice that I will pour out my spirit on what? Now, all flesh here, if you go back to the day of Pentecost, all flesh doesn't mean the whole entire planet, every individual is going to have this glory on them. In that that day of Pentecost, how many different nationalities were represented there? Tons. It was all different kinds because when the outpouring of the Holy Spirit came, what did they do? They They were speaking in tongues, not praying, speaking. And as they were speaking in tongues, there was all these different people, Medes and Persians and you name, all these different nationalities. And guess what? They were speaking in all the different languages of all these people. So what he's saying is this is for all. 
This isn't reserved for one sector, one group of people. No, I'll pour out, verse 28, my, flesh, uh, my, my spirit on what? All flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall what? So let's see if you can remember what I taught you earlier in this series. When we were reading this in the book of Acts, does that mean you are going to go around? Got a word for you. Got a word for you. Got a word for you. What does it mean? What? I think I heard it. They'll speak the word with boldness. If you look this up, when he said your sons and daughters will prophesy, as, as mentioned, some said edification, edification, exhortation, comfort. That's simple prophecy. That's not what this is referring to. If you go look it up, it's saying that when this time comes of my spirit being poured out upon the church, guess what? Doesn't matter if you're male or female. Sons and daughters, what will they do? Speak the word of God with boldness. If you look it up, it tells you that. And it's proven then in the book of Acts. Because after that prophecy was spoken about, guess what they prayed for? Boldness. Guess what they got? Boldness. So this word prophesy here is not talking about you going and prophesying to people a word from God. This is talking about when the Spirit of God, the glory of God comes on the church, what will they do? They will declare God's word with boldness. Notice, your old men will dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. This is how he will begin to bring forth understanding and even insight to others of things that he wants to show them. 29, and also on my men servants and my maid servants, again, I will do what? Pour out my spirit in those days. So who's going to experience the outpouring of his spirit is his manifest presence. What we're talking about, the glory of the Lord. Who's going to experience that? Men servants and maid servants. Not everybody born again, but those who are truly yielded to him as a servant of his. Not in five, four, they don't have to be apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. This is for, again, all, all who are ready to receive it. Verse 30, I will do what? Show wonders in the heavens and therefore also where? In the earth. Now, here's the three things that he said he would show. We saw this over again, the book of Acts. This is already being fulfilled. In part, and then verse 31 and on is talking about what will happen after the day we're living in. So the end of verse 30, what did the Lord, Lord say he would show in the earth? Blood, fire, and pillars of smoke. The first two are fulfilled. The third one has already begun to be fulfilled. And the first two is the blood of Jesus. What's he going to show as a sign in the earth? The blood of Jesus. What's he going to show to prove that this time has come? The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will be a sign. That this is now available. This is, you can't walk in the actual presence of the glory of God without being born again. So how is this going to happen without the shedding of blood? There won't be any way to happen. But the, but the blood has already been shed. What's the second sign? Fire. When did that come? Day of Pentecost. Just like they're actually talking about this over in Acts, this prophecy, when, what happened on the day of Pentecost? It literally looked like divided tongues of fire sat upon each one. So he fulfilled that. He fulfilled the blood as a sign. He fulfilled the fire as a sign. And what's the falling one? Pillars of smoke. Now, if you look that up, and I already showed you a cross-reference in Isaiah chapter 6, what does this refer? This refers to his temple, that's me and you, being filled with the manifest glory of God. One of the ways the glory of God is seen is an actual type of smoke. In essence, it's, it's revealed in many ways. Cloud, pillar of cloud, smoke, fire, all, all different types of things reveal this outpouring of God's manifest presence. So what is the pillars of smoke? God's manifest presence on the church. <clears throat> now, after the church is gone, the sun's going to be what? Turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before, this will happen right before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. The end of all things, the culmination of all things. That's following tribulation period. Right. Verse 32, it shall come to pass that who then whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be what? Amen. Whether now or during the tribulation period. They shall be saved because, notice this, for in Mount Zion, again, reference to what? The church. <clears throat> in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be what? Tell me. Deliverance. Now tell me out loud. Deliverance. So both in the church as well as in Jerusalem, in the latter times of this actually being, un uh, being fulfilled, unfolded, there'll be what? Deliverance. Yes. What's the purpose? To deliver people. To set them free. As the Lord has said among the remnant, 
among the remnant whom the Lord calls. Well, the, the key that you got to understand about who the Lord calls, God's given the ability for anybody to receive an answer to the call of God to be born again. So the, the uh, actual purpose of who this will be fulfilled upon is those who have received him and who walk in the light of this truth. Amen? Amen? So here's what I want you to see. What is this glory of God for? Why the references to pouring out his spirit, all this very aspect of what's going to come upon all who are ready for it? I'll tell you why. It's to do what? Deliver God's people. That's right. To deliver God's people, but also to do what? Deliver those in the world. Jerusalem referring to those outside of the church. For in Mount Zion, verse 32, and, and uh, in Jerusalem, there'll be what? Deliverance. Deliverance. Guess what God wants to do? Free people. Yes. Free people. So what is the purpose of the church being filled with the glory? We saw it in Isaiah 60, right? That darkness would cover the earth, deep darkness the people. But his glory will shine upon the church that truly rises up and shines. Amen. And that glory will draw the Gentiles to you, that light, so they can do what? Get deliverance. Be born again. Amen. Be healed. Be set free. Right. Go to Romans chapter 6. Woo. Romans chapter 6. So we'll go back over a couple of verses I touched on on Wednesday night. Wednesday night I showed you scripture in Haggai that showed about this latter rain being this uh, latter uh, form of God's glory in the temple being greater than the former. That the glory in the latter temple would be greater than the former. Well, who's that temple? You are. Who's that temple? I am. We are the temple of God now. So when you look at in the Old Testament, which was written as, as uh, examples to us, types and shadows, when you look at the temple of the Old Testament and the glory of God in the Old Testament, guess what? That represents me and you today. All the things we see of that glory in the Old Testament, God wants to do in his temple today in the New Testament. That's me and you. We're the temple of God. Where's my Wednesday nighters? Yeah. We're the temple of God. Yes. We're the temple of God. We're now the carriers yes. Yes. of that same glory yes. that you see manifest all throughout the Bible. But every place you see it manifest in the temple of the Old Testament, it doesn't just refer to in this building as a house of God. It's referring to us, the temple of God. That's right. So here in Romans chapter 6, we're going to see this in a reference that I showed you Wednesday night again, verse 4. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Let me see if I can wake you up with these verses. Therefore, we were buried. Yes. Who was? Those who were born again. I've taught, I've taught this recently in our previous series. Some people need to have a, a funeral. Yes. Yes. They need to have a funeral. They need to recognize that old man's dead. dead. Right. That old nature's dead. Well, if that old nature's dead, why are you still walking around with a bad attitude? Come on. Uh -huh. Why are you still walking around frustrated and upset about everything in life? I'm going to tell you why. You need to have a funeral. That's right. You say, that old guy's dead. That's I need to put him in a grave where he belongs and tell him you ain't ruined my life no more. What do I now have? Love, joy, peace, long-serving, goodness, faithful, meaning. None of that has to do with any aspect of a bad attitude, frustration, anger. Come on, man. So some of us need to have a funeral say, that guy, I'm putting him, to, I'm putting him into, into the grave and I'm not letting him back out. I'm not resurrecting him. We're not going to resurrect that life again. <laughs> Romans 6, 4. We were buried with him through what? Baptism into death. Baptism into death. Baptism into death. That old spirit man died. That, just as Christ, in the same way, in the same manner, of which Christ was raised from the dead. How was Christ raised from the dead? He tells you, by the glory of the Father. How was Jesus raised from the dead? By the glory of the Father. Jesus was spiritually dead. He was separated from God. He was in hell. He was in the center of the earth. And what did the glory of the Father do? Brought him out of that very place of hell. Brought him out of that place of separation from the Father. And brought him back to life again. Even his body into a glorified body. What is it that did this? The glory of the Father. Even so we should also walk in what? Newness of life. Even so we should also what? Walk in newness of life. How are we going to walk in newness of life? Through the same glory. Why are some Christians not walking in newness of life? They don't understand the glory. They don't understand what they're a carrier of. They're not aware, they're not aware of it. They're not even acknowledging it. They don't even know it's there. I mean, I challenge you. Other Christians you know that, go, that you know outside this, you ought to go up to them and say, uh, 
do you know what's inside you? Well, yeah, the Spirit of God. But I mean, really, I mean, do you understand what, what you're a carrier of? Do you know what's going, what you actually are having uh, inside you that you're carrying around every day? Think about the glory of God bringing back Jesus from the dead. So let's talk about that. What is the glory of God? Well, what, in, what went into the actual grave itself, into hell itself, and brought Jesus back? The Holy Spirit did. Right. He's the glory of God. He's the manifest presence of God. Well, that same manifest presence, stop and think about this. Let's go way back. We're not turning. I'm just referring. Let's go way back to Genesis when God created everything. All three of the Godhead were in the work, in, in the work of creation. God the Father had the plan. He spoke the word. Jesus is the word. But what brought it to pass? The power of God did. The glory of God did. Well, who was the power of God, the glory of God bringing it to pass? Holy Spirit was. The Bible says that there was this ball of water that God had brought into existence. And then the Bible says he spoke over that ball of water. And in doing so, the Holy Spirit hovering over that ball of water then did what? Responded to the word. And the power then now got released to bring it into being of what God said. Right. Your carrier. Yes, Lord. Lord. No, you ain't got it yet. Yes. You're a carrier yes. of the same power yes. that put the sun in its place, yes. the moon in its place, yes. brought in the land all upon this, this entire area of this, of this earth in which we live. Yes, Lord. Somebody's messing with their, their car horn. Anybody hit, your, hit your, your fob there? Realize that you're a carrier of that. Think about the power it took uh-huh. to bring the sun into existence. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Man. Think about the power it took to bring the sun into existence. Woo. Go look at the sun today. Look up at it and say, don't look at it like very long, but look up at it and say, <laughs> think about the power it took yes. to place that up there, to cause that sun to come into existence. Think about that power. Think about the power it took to put all of the universe in place. The stars. All the other planets. Anybody here any, have any idea the kind of power it took to manage that, to take all that and put it up there and put it in place? Now wait a minute. You have the same power. Does the Bible really say that? I'm about to prove it to you. You have the same power. So the very power that brought all of that stuff into existence, everything of the universe we see, that's stuff we don't even know about yet. That's right. That we can't see. Where is that power today? Residing. That was about three of you. Where is that power today? See, we're never going to walk in this glory of God, this power of God, which will take, as we've already begun to see, which will take all of darkness off of our life. What does Isaiah 10, 27 say the manifest presence of God will do? Remove every burden, destroy every yoke. Yes, every yoke. Yes, it will. You listening? Yes. So if I'm walking in the manifest presence of God, guess what I do not have on my life? Burdens. Right. You no longer have a bad attitude. You know why? Nothing can weigh you down. I no longer have yokes of bondage on my life. Why do many people still have that? Because they're not walking in awareness of what's in them. They haven't released the power. When you walk in the context of the light of the glory of God, that stuff can't get on you. You listening? And you shine as a light to the world. You open people's eyes up to the deliverance that God has for them. Read it again, Romans 6, 4. We were buried with him through baptism in the death. Who was buried with Jesus in the baptism in the death? Who was buried with Jesus in the baptism? Anybody born again? Anybody born again? That just as Christ, in the same manner of which Christ was raised from the dead, how again? You should circle, highlight, or underline by the glory of the Father. Well, even so, we should also do what? How do we do that, Pastor? Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. Did we figure out whose cars out there is? Romans chapter 8. I want you to see this. Romans chapter 8. Turn over to Romans chapter 8. So you go a little further here in the book of Romans. You come over here to Romans chapter 8. Watch this, verse 10. And if Christ is in you, is he? Yes. How do you know? How do you know? Well, multiple ways. One, if you're born again, you got the witness of the Spirit. You got the witness of the what? That same Spirit that is the glory of God that raised Jesus from the dead. If Christ is in you, the body is what? The body is what? Dead because of sin. Yes. 
In other words, our body hasn't gotten resurrected into its new glorified state yet. Not yet. It's coming. Let me back up. The Lord just said you passed right over what I wanted you to tell, what I wanted to tell you. And then I was thinking about the honking. Rrr, rrr, rrr. So, so think about this. When Jesus was raised from the dead, yes. right? How many have ever studied what's known as the Shroud of Turin? Right. And there have been massive scientists who have actually had an opportunity. The Catholics actually have control of it. But they have allowed many scientists to look at this actual Shroud of Turin over and over and over again. Now, if you don't know about it, Within that actual, there's an image on the cloth. Within that actual image is the actual uh, exact uh, actual uh, appearance of what would be our Lord and Savior. Hands crossed have been crucified, blood flowing out of those hands. Feet as well crossed, blood coming out of those feet. Blood coming out of the left side on the side where the heart was, burned into that cloth. As well as around the head where the thorns, of, where the thorns had been put over his head. All the places where we know that Jesus shed blood is actually now embedded into that cloth. Right. And they're like, how in the world did this image get put on there? Not the blood image, because when they look at it now, they look at it, it looks like somehow it got burned into the actual cloth. Right. Now, I read one report of a very well-known and very revered scientist who looked at it in his whole entire lab. They were allowed to take samples of it and look at it over and over again. And the only way they could describe it, they said, we understand radioactivity. And how radioactivity, actually the power of radioactive activity affects things and does things. We can't explain how this image got into this cloth other than it was some imaginable, some, some excuse me, some far beyond our ability, uh, beyond our imagination of power that we can't describe. The closest thing we can get is radioactive power. But we can't describe it. We can. You just read it in Romans 6, 4. He was raised by the glory. What's the glory? The manifest presence of God. When God's presence manifests, church, power is released. When God's manifest presence comes into existence, it's a power is available or it's released. When Jesus came up from the dead, by the power of what? The Holy Spirit, what happened to that cloth? It literally was so powerful, it literally burned his image into that cloth. Wow, wow. Amen. Now that's really something that a lot of people kind of think is a big deal. How about the same power that raises the dead? Amen. Heals the leper. Yes. The lame man. Yes. Delivers the one who's bound. What can that power not do? That power is what raised Jesus from the dead. Now read Romans 8, verse 10. And if Christ is in you, yes, the body is dead because of sin. You don't have a glorified body yet. But the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit that's in you, is life because of what? Right. Now what that means is, if you've received Christ, if you're in Christ, you're now righteous. You're now right with God. And the proof of that is that the very Spirit Himself is the one that gave you this life by coming in you. The Spirit is life because of righteousness. In other words, the Spirit gave you life because of the gift of righteousness. Get into verse 11 with me. But if the Spirit of Him, if the Spirit of who? God. What Spirit? Holy Spirit. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead. Stop. Back up to Romans 6, 4. Read it again. Just as Christ was raised from the dead by what? What was He raised from the dead by? The glory of the Father. Romans 8, verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead. What was the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead? The glory of the Father. The manifest presence of the Holy Spirit. If that spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Does he? Yes. How do you know? Because once you're born again, he comes to live in you. Notice, if he dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead. He, the glory of God who raised Christ from the dead. He, the manifest presence and power of God who raised Christ from the dead, will give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Amen. So even though my body's not in a glorified state, guess what God will do in this time frame of my life if I learn to walk in the glory? What do you got in your body that needs to change? What is it that the Holy Spirit can't heal, fix, or correct? What miracle did Jesus do that wasn't the power of the Holy Spirit doing it? It was all the power of the Holy Spirit doing it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you got the same thing in you. The same power that brought Jesus from the grave is in you now. You are a carrier. You are the temple of the glory of God. You're a temple of the manifest presence of God. 
God clearly told us in the book of Joel, Haggai, and many other places in the Bible as to why we're supposed to have this glory on our lives. So we can shine to the world, Isaiah 60, and be able to do what? Bring deliverance to those who are bound. That's right. To help them realize that our God is here to do what? Deliver you. Yes. It's not just about proving God is God. It's about setting people free. Right. It's about helping people walk in the liberty that God wants them to walk in. God is not a God of bondage. Yeah. God's a God of freedom. Right. God's a God of liberty. Yes. He wants to liberate people. Yes, he does. What's he liberating from? Satan and his effects. That's right. What is it that liberates people? I'll tell you what liberates people. The manifest presence, presence of God. Well, if the truth set people free. Jesus said the words I speak to you. You ready? Yes. John 6. They're spirit. Yes. What are they? They're spirit yes. and their life. Yes. Meaning what? Because they come from God. They're a part of him. What is God? He's a spirit. If those words come from God, what are they? They're part of the manifest presence of God. So you got to understand the whole purpose is delivering people, setting people free. Well, who are the carriers of this now presence of God that God wants to use to set people free? He chose you for this day. He put you here on purpose. He did, he did not place you here just to go to church Hear a sermon, walk out the door, and go back living like a mere human. You're not a mere human. He did not call for you to go through this life, living through this life, bound by anything. His anointing, the manifest presence of God. Come on, Isaiah 10, 27, removes every burden, destroys every yoke. Why would he want you in bondage but want to free other people through you? We have... Oh man, tonight's going to be powerful. We have already within us as vessels of God this treasure called the glory of God. Called the manifest presence of God. It's the same glory that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the same glory that did miracle signs and wonders in Jesus' day. It's the same glory that filled the temple in the Old Testament where people couldn't even stand. So again, verse 11, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, does he? Yes. Then guess what? That same Holy Spirit, the glory of God, the manifest presence of God will do what? Quicken your mortal body. Yes. Wished he'd do that for me. He would if you let him. <laughs> I said he would if you let him. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Well, I just don't understand why he won't do it because you haven't let him yet. There's things you have to do to allow him the opportunity to do so. He's a perfect gentleman. He's not going to do anything without your permission. He's not going to do anything without you having faith to believe that, uh, that obviously what God said is yours is already so. Right. I so want to get into my next series already, but I haven't finished this one. Always happens. But I want you to see this. 2 Corinthians. Back to 2 Corinthians. We read a lot of these verses from verse 7 down in chapter 3. I can't reread all those verses. It takes too long to walk through that and try to explain it to everybody. But let me just give you an understanding of what he's talking about in, in Romans, uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 7, all the way down here through verse 16. He's talking about a comparison of the day of Moses. When Moses went up on Mount Sinai, when he was up there with God, God gave him the Ten Commandments. What is it? When he got the stones prepared, what is it that actually wrote the commandments in the stones? Finger. The finger of God, right? God's so powerful, he can just reach out with his finger on a stone and just etch in a stone. He don't need no tool or nothing, just use his finger, Amen. right? So that's all happening in the manifest presence of God on Mount Sinai. When Moses came down off of that mountain with those Ten Commandments, his face was so glowing wow. just from being around that presence, yes. just from the residue of God's presence. His face shone so brightly that the people couldn't look at him. It's like you are trying to look at the sun. Right. Think about it. Wow. He had to put a veil over his face just so they could look at him. Cool. That's how glorious your God is. Yes. The glory of the Lord talked about many times is a bright light, so bright that it almost blinds you. Guess what uh, Saul, back at the time when he actually had this happen, guess what Saul actually had an experience of on the road to Damascus? The glory of God. The light was so bright it blinded him. Knocked him off his donkey. Are you listening? So you and I understandably know that that glory was present in Moses' day 
And if that was a glorious experience in Moses' day where it literally caused his face to shine, didn't deliver anybody, didn't set anybody free, how much more now that we're carriers, yes. are we not in a more glorious time than Moses? Yes. Oh, I wish I could go back onto the mountain of Moses. You know what Moses would be saying? Sure wish I could be living where you're living. Yeah. Yeah, really. I got to be around it. Now you got it in you. Are you kidding me? You, you're not around it. You're a carrier. What I experienced manifest on that mountain, you're, you're hot, you're housing. You're carrying it around. It's in you every day. I couldn't have that around me every day. Only when God called me to the mountain. Only when God called me to the tabernacle. You got it every day. You're a carrier every day. What are you doing with it? Moses would be sitting here looking at us saying, man, you don't know what you got. You don't realize what you're carrying around. So he tells us in verses 7 down here through verse 16 that the time we're living in is a time which is far more glorious. Far more glorious. And he talks about in verse 14 that they were blinded under the context of the Old Testament not being able to see this glory had come because there's a veil lifted, there's a veil over their eyes until they turn to Jesus. When they turn to Jesus now meaning you can't get revelation of this glory until you get born again. If you're not born again, you have no understanding of what I'm talking about. But when you turn to the Lord, now you know. Watch this, verse 16. Nevertheless, one turns to the Lord. What happens? The veil. Now, how does that, come on. How does that represent me and you? So, he's comparing it to Moses. So, when Moses came off of the mountain, the glory of God's on him, man. His face is shining so bright they can't look on him. They got to put a veil in that so, they, so they can't experience the fullness of that glory. But you and I can. Yes. Because in Christ, the veil's taken away. Yes. Meaning what? That glory is now in you. Yes. It's in you. You're a carrier. Say, I'm a carrier. I'm a carrier. Remember, it's the same power raised Jesus from the dead. Yes. Oh, if Christians knew what they had. Woo. 17, the Lord is that spirit. Yes. Yes. So you're talking about the Holy Spirit. And he's saying the reason that you have him is because of Jesus the Lord. Because he became Lord over all because of what he did through his death, burial, and resurrection. Guess who brought you the ability to have that spirit? Now, the Lord did. Yes. The Lord is a spirit. And therefore, where that spirit provided by the Lord is, what, what is there? Liberty. Listen to that. Where that spirit is now at provided by the Lord. You couldn't do it without receiving what Jesus did. You couldn't, you couldn't have that spirit without receiving what Jesus our Lord did for you. But guess what? Our Lord who has provided us this spirit, now wherever that spirit is, what is there again? Because as we read in Joel's prophecy, what's God all about with this manifest presence of His? Deliverance. Woo, come on somebody. Get woke up if you're not already. God wants us walking in what? Liberty. Say, I'm not only. Lift your hand to heaven and say, Father, I'm not only a carrier of your glory. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. I'm not only a carrier of that presence, but I'm a carrier of all the liberty I'll ever need. Say it again. I'm a carrier of all the liberty I'll ever need. Oh, if that ever dawned on you. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Now, see, I'd much rather make sure that I got connected to my pastor, Dr. Barclay, who's taught me these things, as well as Dr. Summerall that I've learned through him, as opposed to just being in some religious church that all they're going to do is put on holy jeans and a T-shirt and just try to make you feel like you're okay with God instead of teaching you who you really are. Yes. Think about the power of this. How many Christians do you know know what they're carry of? You should know. I said you should know. 18, we all, who we all, those who are born again. Yeah. We all with what? Unveiled face. This isn't hidden from us anymore. No. We all with unveiled face beholding yeah. as in a mirror. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? The glory of the Lord. Underline it. What are we looking at? The glory of the Lord. What are we looking at? The manifest presence of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus. We're being transformed. Come on, we're being transformed into the same image. From glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Man, I'm going to have to get Claire to break out her amen sign again. <laughs> you should know when to say, so be it for me, Lord. 
What's amen? So be it for me. If you don't know when to say that, you better start learning. Because you better start declaring over your life who God says you are. Well, I'll give you one more shot. Can I give you one more shot? We all, say that's me, with unveiled face. This isn't hidden to you anymore. With unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. Where do we hold, behold as a mirror the glory of the Lord? The Bible, the word of God about what Jesus did for us. There we go. She got it, man. We being transformed into this same image from glory to glory. How's that happen? Just as by the... So what if I'm not doing what's necessary to, how, to allow the housing of what I have in me, the Holy Spirit, to do this work in me? Then you're not going to be, you're not become that glorious church. You're not going to be transformed from glory to glory. He's the one that does it as you do what you're supposed to do to allow that to happen. Reading on now, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on, we got to get through these other verses. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame. You cannot keep walking in all the aspects of the carnal worldly stuff that is contrary to what God wants you to live as and walk in that glory. It's going to cover it up. It's going to hide it. We're going to start talking about that later tonight. We have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but in manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3, but even if our gospel is veiled, what's the gospel? The good news I just told you about. Even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are what? Why? Because they're not born again yet. They can't see it. But once you're born again, the veil's taken away. For whose mind the God of this, this age has blinded. The God of this age means God of this world. That's Satan. Notice, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel. Right. Right. Well, there you are, little shining believer with the manifest presence of God. Amen. I said, there you are, little believer with the manifest presence of God. Lest the light of the gospel of the glory, the glory, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should do what? Shine on them. Well, that ain't going to happen if you ain't shining. Amen. If you're walking around believers every day like a mere human, not knowing what you're a carrier of, not letting that glory shine through you, guess what they're never going to see? They're not going to see that shine on them. But they can. Yes, they can. What did Joel say? So that all who would call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Five, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ. Christ Jesus the Lord. And ourselves, your bondservants for Jesus' sake. Listen carefully, you ready? Verse six, for it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. God, you were in darkness. What did God do? Commanded light to shine out of you. Who has shone in our hearts. Again, talking about he has placed that glory inside you. He has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. What do you mean? He wants us to be walking around showing everybody that glory. So people can come to know Jesus Christ. Yes. Verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Yes. Yes. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Yes. I got a grunt beyond a yes that time. Yes. But we have this treasure. We have this treasure. We have this treasure, what? The glory of God, the manifest presence of God. You have no greater treasure upon this planet or within all the universe. The greatest treasure you could ever ever find is the manifest presence of God. What could the manifest presence of God not change or do? We have this treasure in earthen Vessels. Yes. I'll keep reading it. If I have to, we'll go through lunch. We have this treasure. Can I say it another way? In us now. Earth and vessels means those who are here who are born again. We have this treasure in us now. What treasure? 
The very thing he talked about in verse 16, the glory of God. That's the treasure. That's the treasure. We have this treasure in earth and vessels. Why? Why do we have this treasure in us? That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. See, when you walk around manifesting that glory, manifesting that presence, what's being manifest? The power of God. People are getting liberated by the power of God. You're not doing it. The power of God's doing it. Jesus didn't do any miracles himself. He said, it's the Father in me that does the works. When did that begin? When he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'll try again. <laughs> we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Why? That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. When that power is manifest through us, guess what they're going to know? You didn't do that. Who did that? Who delivered me right now? Who touched me right now? Who, who, what am I sensing on me? What is this I got on me, man? I'm telling you, I never felt this kind of peace before. Where did this come from? Oh, I tell you, I'm feeling pretty free right now from all the stress and fear and worry I've been under. Where would that come from? Where would you get that from? That ain't you. No, that's what they're going to tell you. Hey, we're hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. So even though we're going through challenges in the natural, guess what? Okay, we're hard pressed on every side, but you know what? Because we have the glory, guess what? We're not crushed. We're perplexed. In other words, we have issues and challenges that we face, but guess what? We're not in despair. Persecuted, sure, but guess what? Not forsaken. Struck down, yeah, but guess what? Not destroyed. Yeah, stone me, leave me for dead. Guess what? I'll just get back up from the glory of God and walk right back into town. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ that the life of Jesus may also be what? Now that right there is a key to the glory. That is a key to the glory. Before I get into that, I want to start giving you points of how we allow this treasure that's in us to manifest. How do we allow this treasure that's in us to manifest? How do we let it out, Pastor? So uh, I need you to go back, first of all, to chapter 3, verse 18. I'm going to give you these key points. If you want the glory of God on your life, you better start taking notes or have a good memory. I want the glory of God on my life greater to the degree than I've ever had it. I don't want to be a carrier. Think about it. I don't want to be a carrier of this life-altering life-changing, life-liberating power of God and then get to heaven and have my Jesus say, why did you keep my, my power hidden in you? Why did you keep it shut up in you? I didn't give it for you to just carry it around. I gave it so the excellence of my power could be seen. So I could liberate mankind. And here you are in heaven, thank God for that, but you're being held accountable because I gave you something you chose not to be aware of and use for my very purpose. I gave you the glory of God not to just be a carrier, to shine. Amen. To shine that light. Amen. To let that power shine through your life. Well, don't you think we should learn how? Yes, All right, point number one, found in verse 18. We all with unveiled face, born again, are beholding as in a mirror the word of God, the glory of the Lord. The Bible's a mirror. The Word is a mirror that reflects what? What is it? Ref- if you look in a mirror, what are you seeing? Come on. I mean, I see all the time. People go look at this mirror right here over here. Right? So, I think I'll go check myself out real quick. See, camera can't go that far. Sorry. See how I look here. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. What am I looking at? Me? You don't look too bad today. Praise the Lord. What do you look in a mirror for? What do you look in a mirror for? I know some of you are like, mm-hmm. oh, booger hanging. No. What do you look in the mirror for? To see yourself. What are you looking at mirror for? What are you looking at mirror for? What are you looking at mirror for? To see yourself. Why are you looking at the word? To see yourself. How do I see myself? By looking at Jesus. He's the image. I'm one spirit with the Lord. We all with unveiled face beholding us in a mirror. Sorry, streamers. 
I was overlooking in the mirror. Apologize. We don't have a camera to go that far. We with unveiled face beholding us in the mirror. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? What are we looking at? The glory of the Lord. Lord. I thought we're looking at us. Yes. Yes. You're a carrier. It's It's there. In this mirror, we're looking at the glory of the Lord. And we're being therefore transformed into the same image from glory to glory, from glory to glory. From one degree of that presence getting stronger in my life to another degree, to another degree, to another degree. degree. The glory of God that's in you should not be receding. It should be increasing. It should be getting brighter. You should see it more often. You should see it working through your life more and more if you're doing what you're supposed to do to let that glory out. Number one, if you want to walk in what you have as a believer and help God do what he called you to do, what must we do? We must get a picture. That's what you're going to want to write down. We must get a picture through the word of God of who we now are in Christ. We need to get a picture of who we now are in Christ through the word of God. You and I are primarily only going to see that. Now, there's examples of reflections of it in the Old Testament prophesied. But where are we going to see a picture of us in the Bible primarily? New Testament. In that context of the word, what are you going to see? A picture of you. When you see a picture of Jesus, even through the disciples, even in the context of the letters written to the churches, what are you seeing? You're seeing what the disciples were doing. But guess what? They were doing it because Jesus is the one. That empowered them to do it. They just learned about it. They were doing what Jesus did. Why were they called Christians at Antioch? Mm -hmm. Why is the first time the term Christian ever came up was not from Jesus' lips. It wasn't from the disciples' lips. It wasn't from any of the believers' lips. The people in Antioch are saying, who are these guys? You know what people need to be saying about you? Who are these guys? Well, why would they be saying that? They're healing people. They're delivering people. They're, they're casting demons out. They're, they're doing all these miraculous things. Who are they? Well, that's what they said at Antioch about the believers who were doing the works of Jesus. And somebody said, those are those Christians, those little Christ followers. Remember that Christ guy that came? They talked about him. They follow him. At least they knew who he was relating to. Can I get a better amen? Amen. So listen, folks, to be a Christian is to go do the works Jesus did. You know how many people say they're Christians and have never done in relationship to anything that Jesus did? Now, I don't blame everybody because a lot of people don't know they can. But you're not going to sit in this church and not find out you can't. John 14, 12, Jesus said, you believe in me. Don't turn there. You believe in me, the works. I do, you'll do also. What do you mean believe in him? Not just salvation, believe in what I told you. What did he pray for you in John 17? Father, I'm praying for all of my apostles and disciples and all that will come after them. I'm praying for them that just as you sent me into the world, what did he send him into the world with? The glory of God. So I send them into the world. He prayed that over you. He prayed that over you. You don't have anything less than Jesus had. Point number one, I have to wake up to the reality through the word of God of getting a picture of who I now am in Christ. Not who you are, the old nature. You got to quit looking at the old you. You gotta, that's, that, that's that burial thing again. You got to quit looking at that old nature, that old man. You got to start looking at this new man. You got to start getting a picture of who's really on the inside of you. And we just finished a whole series about that, who you are in Christ. Now, along with that, and I'll tie this into tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to this verse here for just a moment. Verse 10, we are always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where are we carrying this about? In the body. In the body. Notice he specifically referenced the body. We're caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. Now, I'm going to come back to that tonight. I don't want to get to that yet. I'm going to come back to that tonight. But I'm going to real quick help you understand what that's saying. What do you mean I care about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ? <clears throat> you can't let your flesh rule you and walk in the glory of God. <laughs> Jesus died to deal with your body. Yes. We're going to talk about that tonight. He died, died so that you could deal with your body and overcome it by the power of God. You can't let your body just rule and do whatever you want and see the glory of God work. 
You know, that's like saying, that's like handing a child a gun who has no idea how dangerous that gun is. That it could actually hurt people. And just say, here, go have fun with it. And they just start pointing and shooting everything. Man, they're going to hurt people. God's not going to release his glory through you. Come on, somebody. If all you're doing is walking with a carnal understanding as a human and not realizing the power you got, God's not releasing that power for, through you to be able to run somebody off the freeway. In the name of Jesus, you need to get out of my way. If that power worked every time you said that, that person's in trouble. Are you listening? See, we can't just let the carnal flesh rule and walk in the glory of God. Now, I'll come back to that tonight. Say, that's tonight. Say, that's tonight. Go to Ephesians 1, because i got to finish where we left off on Wednesday night. Ephesians chapter 1. So you and I need to, first of all, wake up to the understanding through the Word of God of who we now are in Christ. Well, that's not going to happen if you're not what? If you're not living in church, living in the Word, obviously in a place where they teach you who you are. Why in the world, why in the world church do you think I emphasize, emphasize this so much in our church? Always teaching about who you are, what you have, what you can do. Why do we make a confession? I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. I can do what God says I can do. Because I'm trying to get you to see the new you. So Ephesians chapter 1 gives us better insight as to some additional help we need to take advantage of to walk in this glory. Anybody want to do this? Yes. Verse 15, Ephesians 1, 15. We looked at this real quickly on Wednesday night. I won't have a lot of time here, but I'll spend a little bit of time and I'll pick it up tonight. Therefore, I, I also, after I heard of your faith, Paul writing the church at Ephesus, knowing of who he's writing to here, had heard of their faith, they're born again. I've heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for what? All the saints. I don't cease, therefore, to do what? Give thanks for you, making mention of my prayers. 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, would do what? Give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Amen. So he's saying, you're born again, I'm praying for you. I'm praying that my God would give to you revelation. Not head knowledge, not, not even soulish understanding, revelation in your heart. That in your spirit man, notice that the God of the Lord Jesus Christ Father, would give to, your, give to you the spirit of wisdom. That's in your spirit man. Yeah, right. To give you wisdom in your spirit of the revelation of the knowledge of him. To get to know the one who you have received as your savior. Amen. That you would really get to know him. 18, the eyes of your understanding would also be what? Enlightened. The eyes here is referring to the inner man, not your, not your physical eyes. It's talking about your inner man, your spirit man. That the eyes of your understanding would what? Be enlightened, that the light would go off. Yes. Light would go off. Yes. And that what would happen? That you may know. Yes. What? That you may know what is the hope of his calling. Amen. Amen. Hope means what he is expecting of your life that he called you to in the day you're living. God's got a call on your life. He expects you to fulfill it. Yeah. What is that call? That you would come to the realization of what are the riches or the wealth, one translation says, of what? Tell me. Glory. No, no, no. Come on, tell me. Glory. Of the glory, of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. Amen. What did He give you as an inheritance? The glory of God. Glory of God. I want you to come to an intimate revelation knowledge of your God that you know Him personally. And that you would realize your calling is to wake up to what is inside you now. Yes. Amen. Amen. That I have given you as an inheritance the glory of our God. Why? 19. That you could then see the exceeding greatness of his power yes. toward us who believe. According to what? The working of his mighty power. In other words, that you in manifesting this glory, what are you going to see? You're going to see the exceeding greatness of God's power yes. manifesting through your life. And liberating people. Yes. Amen. Amen. Including yourself. You listening? Yes. 20. We already read it in Romans 6, 4. Which he worked in Christ. Where is that now? It's in you. Yes. This same power that he worked in Christ when he did what? Raised him from the dead. And seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Far above. All principality, power, might, dominion. Every name that's named. Not in this age, but also that is to come. Well, that was Jesus raised up to that. Verse 22. He put all things under his... He put all things under his feet, gave him to be head over all things to the church. Who's the head of the church? Who's the body? 
We're all, where are all these things? They're under us. All these things he talked about, principalities, powers, all these things, and every name that's named, where are they at now? They're under us. Why? Because we have authority over them. 23, which is his, which is his, so that'd be me, so that'd be me, which is his body, the fullness of him. Who fills all in all? Who fills all in all? The only way the church is going to see all that God wants done and manifest is when all of the church as a whole wakes up to the reality of why they're here and begins to allow that glory to manifest through them. Not just one or two preachers. Not just one or two believers. Takes the whole body to see all of what God wants to do. That's a corporate anointing. That's a corporate manifestation. Can I get a better amen? So what's the second thing we need to do, Pastor, to be able to experience this glory in our life? We've got to pray to be enlightened to what we have within us. Write that down. I need to pray that God would enlighten me to what I have within me. It's going to take the Holy Spirit to reveal that. It's going to take the Holy Spirit to reveal that. Your brain alone is not going to cause that to manifest in your life because you know it in your head. You need to come to an awareness in your inner man. You need to, become to, you need to come into an awareness in your inner man, in your spirit man, of what's within you. The glory of God. Well, who reveals it? Who reveals that to you? Holy Spirit does. It's the Holy Spirit that reveals this to your spirit. This is why you got to pray. And this is why you got to ask God. How's God going to reveal that to you? Through the Holy Spirit. That as you pray this prayer, you can personalize it and you can pray this prayer for you. And as you pray this prayer, how many think if you pray in line with God's will, he'll listen? Yeah. How do you know? Yeah. First John 5. Yeah. Anybody know the verses? Yeah. 14 and 15. 14, if I ask anything according to his will, this is his will. Yeah. He hears me. Yeah. 15, if I know he heard me, I know I have yeah. what I've asked of him. Yeah. Most Christians are not walking the reality of this glory because one, they're not looking at the image of who they are. Two, they're not praying and asking God to alert their, to, to awaken their spirit to this reality. Amen. When your spirit gets a hold of it and you get a hold of this relationship to your inner man and wake up to it on your inner man, man, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do when I read these verses. You're going to be shouting. Amen. Come on, you're going to be shouting. You're going to be praising God. You know why? Because they're going to ignite that, that, that whole truth in you again. So that's right. Yes. I'm a carrier. Yes. I got the same glory. Yes. That raised Jesus from the dead. See, all those in the Bible who ever saw how good God was, they got real silent and quiet and they said nothing. No, they got excited. As I've said to our church, it's time to raise your praise. I don't feel like it. There you go. You're walking by feelings. You'll never walk by faith. Well, I just don't feel like praising God today. Okay, walk by feelings. You're not walking by faith. God won't show up for you today. God won't help you today. God won't inhabit your praise today. Why? You're going by feelings. I just don't feel like worship. I just don't feel like praising. All, all my week, all that's happened, you want to get rid of all that? Get in the presence, get the manifest presence of God on you. Rejoice when you feel like it. <laughs> so again, what do we got to do? Look at this prayer. Let me walk you through it. Okay, three, three key primary things that he reveals here in this context of this prayer. Watch this. Actually, there's four, but three primary. But let's look at the first one. All right, verse 17. What am I praying? God, help me within my spirit, man, to get wisdom and revelation. Revelation. Where does that come from? Holy Spirit in your spirit. Give me revelation. Reveal to me you're in there. Yes. Yes. Knowledge of him, that I know you're there. Reveal to me that I know you're there. One. Two. Help, ha, help me to have the eyes of understanding. This is your spirit, man. You can say it this way. Help me to be enlightened, Lord. Help enlighten me that I may know, number two, the hope of my calling. What you expect of my calling on this earth. So, Lord, number one, I'm asking you to reveal to me in my spirit, man, that you're really there. And as you do, reveal and unveil to me the very purpose of why I'm here. That's the hope of his calling. Number two, reveal to me, Lord, why I'm really here. And show me, number three, this is why you're here. That's why I say normally it's just three if you combine these two. That I already have within me as an inheritance the glory of God. Help me understand, Lord, that my inheritance, the glory of God, is already in me. Help me see that. Yes, Lord. Help me become aware of it. 
Help me become aware, number three, that that glory is already in there. I already have that inheritance. It's already inside me. And that as I come, number three, to an awareness of that glory, Lord, number four, help me to see the exceeding greatness of your power rise up within me and manifest through me to set people free. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead. I'll go back over tonight. Number one, Father, reveal to me the reality of the presence of God that's in me now. You, you're in there. As you do that, number two, help me to understand my purpose on this planet. Help me understand my calling, my purpose for being here. Number three, which is to wake up to the reality of my inheritance that's already in me. Show me that glory. Help me be aware of that power that I'm already a carrier of. And as you do, number four, then allow me to be used by you to see the exceeding greatness of that power flow through my life. Can I get a better amen? amen? You ought to be praying that every day. Yes. Yes. This is not a petition prayer you ask one time. This is something because you can go from one degree of glory, amen. glory to glory. So you keep praying and God will keep revealing more of it. I'll finish with a testimony. Some of you heard it, so if I bore you, that's okay. Just nod off and go to sleep. I got a great idea for our church. I got a great idea for our church, for people that sleep in our church. You ready for this? We all bring an extra set of clothes. And when anybody in our church, all these people fall asleep, we'll just leave clothes on the chair. We'll run out the door. We'll sound a trumpet. <laughs> and wake them up. What do they see? Clothes all on the seat. Uh-oh. <laughs> Some of you get that after lunch. That's a joke. <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? If we wake them up with a trumpet sound yes. and we're all out of the room, they wake up and see clothes laying on the chairs, guess what they're going to think? I missed it. <laughs> the rapture. It happened and I'm left. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a joke, folks. Your pastor can joke with you once in a while. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Listen carefully. You and I have to understand that for us to get a hold of this in our hearts, to get revelation of this in our hearts, We've got to cry out to God and ask for it. Say, I got to cry out to God. I was in my only church that I actually attended that I was a part of before God called me to pastor, Cowboy Church. It originally started Billy Bob's Texas. We had moved around now to what was the auction barn at the time. It's now actually the Cowboy Channel Studios. But it was an auction barn, still being used. They were still selling cattle, sometimes horses, mostly cattle, and that auction barn all through the week. But on Sunday mornings, we were there having church. And I guarantee you what, man, it was full of fleas. I went to church with fleas. You think you had church bad? You complain about it being too hot, too cold in here? Man, you're always trying to get fleas off you, man. There are fleas all over that place because of the animals that were there during the week. I didn't care. So here I am at church one day, and I'm hearing a testimony from our pastor, Jeff. Jeff was really an evangelist. In his latter years, he realized it went back to that. An evangelist, man, if they fulfill their calling God, guess what they're going to see? They're going to see that glory. God's going to use them as they're out there witnessing and sharing their faith and talking to other people. Now, we are all supposed to do the work of an evangelist. But man, he had all kinds of testimonies, all kinds of stuff that happened. You name it, man, he had a testimony for it. And we'd hear these testimonies almost all the time on on Sundays at church, he'd share a testimony. One day in church, I'm pretty young still. The church, I started with Billy Bob's, now we're in the auction barn. One day in church, I told the Lord, I said, you know, Lord, you know my heart. I don't want to be seen by people. But I also know I don't want to be left out on what you're doing. I'm not, I'm not a person who wants to sit on the sideline and watch everybody else play the game. Right. Yeah. We're in a war. I want to get in. I want to be a part of helping set people free. I love hearing my pastor's testimonies, but I don't have any. And I don't want a testimony for me. He doesn't take glory to him for it. We know God did those things. You know my heart. You know if I'm sincere or not. I'm telling you, God, I lifted my hands to heaven. I said, I want you to use me in that way. I just actually prayed what I just told you in Ephesians chapter 1. I want to see the exceeding greatness of your power. I didn't say it that way. I want to see the exceeding greatness of your power work through me like that. All I said was, I want you to use me. I was walking in a revelation of God in me. I was having sweet fellowship with God every day. I just said, I want you to use me, Lord. Little did I know the next Tuesday, a guy would get raised from the dead. 
I don't think it happened just because of that, but I think it happened in relationship to that because I told God, I want to see that power. I want to see that glory. I didn't go find a dead man and raise him up. I was actually at a bull riding that I normally go to. It's a long story. But God not only raised him up from the dead, he, got, he had a bull land on top of him from about four or five feet in the air. I mean, you know, ever had 1,500 pounds land on top of your body? No, don't want to. And then roll off of you? Any idea what happened to that body? He didn't just get raised from the dead. He got healed. He got up and walked away without a single ounce of anything wrong with it. I got in my vehicle, my little truck, my little Toyota truck at the time to drive home. I got in my Toyota truck to, to drive home, and that glory, I, I can relate to, to Moses. That glory was so strong all of a sudden in that cab of that truck after that happened, I couldn't hardly drive. I could, it, it gets so strong on your, on your body. Physically, your body can't handle it. Imagine the power it takes to raise somebody from the dead. I'm like, I'd, I'd pull over, man. I had to pull over the side of the road like, Lord, I got to get up at two in the morning and get in a rock truck and drive tomorrow. I got to get home. You got to get this off of me so I can get home or I'm not going to make it home. I get back on the road and drive for a while and there it is. It's so strong, man. So I just kept saying, Lord, you're going to have to help me get home then. Man, I tell you what, I went home, slept like a baby, got up, went to work. And I'm going to tell you why that happened because really, in essence, I prayed that prayer. I want to see your power. I want to see your glory. I want to help people. I want to see people delivered because I know that's why I'm here. I know that's a reason. I wasn't a pastor, folks. I was just attending church just like you. But I'm going to tell you what, that prayer works. And I didn't pray to see somebody raised from the dead. And I didn't pray to see somebody healed. I didn't pray. All I prayed was, God, I want to be used. However you want to use me. I want to see the exceeding greatness of your power work through me so that I can know I'm doing my part to help set people free. We're being really selfish if we're walking around on this planet and we don't desire this. That's right. Amen. Because you're a carrier of the very thing that will deliver them Amen. from what has them bound. That's right. Amen. You got it in you now. Amen. I said you got it in you now. Amen. Stand your feet. We pray that you are blessed by the message Pastor Baker shared with you today. For more spiritual resources that can help you in your walk with God, or to invite Pastor Baker as a guest speaker, just go to our website at cffchurch.com. You will find additional teachings by video, audio, and printed resources that will be a blessing to you. May God's very best be yours.